X-Men, the animated series from the 90s, season 4, episodes 17, 16 and 17, thoughts. These episodes are called Weapon X, Lies, and Videotape, and Have Yourself a Morlock Little Xmas. So, uh, another two episodes I absolutely love. Spoilers for these two episodes, as well as the show leading up to them. Before I get into it, uh, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important cause. And then there's a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important cause. And, yeah. Um, starting with Weapon X, Lies, and Videotape, which... Such an excellent title. I know I already said that in, like, the video I did yesterday, but just, yeah. So, more Sabretooth. I gotta admit, uh, I had thought Sabretooth would be a bigger part of this show. He's a pretty significant, you know, Wolverine nemesis, but not a lot, you know, but I'm I'm not really complaining. They've, they've chosen some really good stories featuring both of them to, yeah. And... Yeah, so, you know, Wolverine, the, 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 the telepathic therapy that Xavier has done to, to help Wolverine is not quite sufficient, you know, so he, and, and, you know, he runs off, but the, you know, um, Gene sends Beast to go, and it does make sense, because Beast is, somewhat a physical match for Logan, you know, and I can't help but, like, the moment that you see Wolverine attacking all of his friends because he thinks, like, in his mind, they look like, you know, some of his enemies, you know, this time it wasn't Mysterio who was behind it. And... Yeah, you know, we learned that it's in part this the the programming, and yeah, we get this flashback. We see they actually fought Omega Red together. I forget what the team is called because I mean Weapon X. That was the Weapon X program. That was specifically the. Or wait, I was. The weapon? No, because that was, yeah, that was the specifically the program. Um, I mean, yeah, looking at over the Wikipedia, no, I guess it was uh, Weapon X. The team Weapon X is what we see in this episode, and very cool that Maverick and Silver Fox are actually still alive despite being left for dead. And, yeah, they get into the memory manipulation, which, you know, they haven't really touched upon before in this show when, when it comes to Wolverine. You know, which, still surprised that apparently he did not lose his memories during the, the adamantium process, as he does in other continuities. Uh, yeah, really cool to see exploration of Weapon X, the, the beyond the the bond the adamantium bonding uh, you know when i started watching the show i knew that there was you know there was a time when wolverine and sabretooth worked together and yeah really cool to actually see it so you know explored here and you know like i i think every single episode of this show takes place in the present of the of the show you know, in the comics, there are actually stories that's where it's just like, no, you, you know, you the reader, you're a teenager, you can deal with this. This story is in its entirety set before the events of the other comics. You know, maybe decades before or something. But that hasn't. They also haven't really done it in the live action movies. the The stories tend to there. There might be like flashbacks. There might be, you know, some of the movies span many decades, but they tend to bring it into, if not the present day, the uh, at least something of um, something close to it, something that you know that links up with a flashback in another movie to the to the past, so you can like mentally place it. And yeah, we're told about Project Talos, which we don't 
immediately know what's about, and we see Sabretooth was abused as a kid. His father was a religious nut. I, I suppose I could just have said his father was religious. And, you know, ag again, like, it's it's a bit of a theme on this show. I, it's, I'm not sure it's true in all of the X-Men comics, but, you know, the, the violent mutants, usually they faced violence before they started, you know, dishing out any violence. They were, they were punished for being different, and that led to violence. And, yeah, it becomes clear, like, basically, the Weapon X members were sleepers, you know, with, with the manipulation of their memories. They were supposed to be... Yeah. And... You know, they find the place where they can, you know, all four of them can place their hands. And Beast points out, this is weird. If you're not supposed to discover this, if the four of you are not supposed to go in here, if that's what they don't want you to do, why is the only way to open the door for the four of you to, to you know... And Wolverine's just like, I need answers. I don't, you know, he's not always, he's not always the smartest. Um, and, and Talos is in there. There's actually two Talos, and we have really, really cool action. I appreciate that this, this episode does not feel the need to, like, constantly do big action scenes. You know, they saved a big action scene for the end of the episode, the, the climax. But before that, it's, it's the drama. It's the, you know, it's realizing that Silver Fox and Maverick are still alive. It's the the reveals about the memory manipulation and such that keeps the the you know keeps us really invested in the episode. And you know, this is a Wolverine centric episode, so of course it has a sad ending. You know, I guess was it yesterday that I talked about? You know, there's like. So far on the show, we've had, like, one Wolverine solo story that actually does not end in a sad way. And it's pretty... That's in a lot of comic books as well. But, yeah, you know, he's he's like, I, you know, it must have been real because I carved our names in the door and that was not that fake door over there. And she says that, you know, perhaps, but it was another lifetime. You know, and I really appreciate, you know, Wolverine lets Sabretooth go because he could have chosen to attack me, and he didn't. You know, I, I really appreciate the emphasis. There, there was an earlier episode also where they let Juggernaut go. You know, now, in the case of Juggernaut, it might also have been, dude, it's really difficult to stop. You know, we've just been fighting for a while. But, no, like, seriously... They actually do have, you know, if, if someone who has chosen violence in the past chooses nonviolence, the X-Men are willing to give them a chance. But, but yeah, really excellent episode. Really glad that they do actually get into, you know, all this stuff about the Weapon X program on this show. And I think that might cover yes so the second episode i will be talking about today have yourself a morlock little xmas i have to admit i completely forgot they did a straight up christmas special episode like this is this is the christmas episode and i'm here for it this is like at first, it seemed like, oh, it's just, it's going to be one of the really shallow and bland ones. You know, I'm, I'm giving it a chance, but okay, so characters that are usually serious are doing caroling or talking about how bad they are at caroling. And, you know, just these, the, you know, Gambit and Jean are arguing over the food and just, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very straightforward, like, Christmas episode stuff. But then it actually does get into the the really, you know, really sad stuff that some Christmas stories do, where, like, 
for a chunk of this episode, it looks like Leech might die. And it's not like this is a show that never has a character die. You know, so, yeah, like, for a while, I legit was not sure. Oh my god, are they... Are they going to kill the child in this Christmas episode? Is that is that a thing that's about to happen here? You know, and just, yeah, if... if this is such a corny episode, and I absolutely love it. But yeah, um, you know, normally Jean is like completely calm, and her voice is soothing, and you know, she's not, you know, but you better not mess with the food she's cooking, you know, or you're going to be in trouble. Just, that was, that was very funny. Let's see, and, you know, it's... Is that an alarm on Christmas? And it turns out it was Beast who accidentally blew up the cranberry, or was it cranberry glaze? Which is just, you know, and Wolverine was like, "Yes, I get to beat up someone." <laughs> just you know, he's he's the real Scrooge of the episode, and as you know, as should always be the case, by the end, Scrooge has seen the Scrooge has seen the error of his ways. And, you know, Jubilee is very happy about, you know, having a family to have Christmas with, you know, so she's that archetype for, for the Christmas story. Let's see, and, you know, for, for the first while, it looks like, oh, I guess there's just going to be zero action in this episode. And I'm really glad that they actually, ultimately, there is very little action in this episode. It is straight up a Christmas story set in the X-Men animated X-Men universe, you know. The you know, there's the bit with the the ambulance and you know, the it, it legitimately is very sad to hear, you know, first we're told Leech is sick, then we're told he was refused help from the hospital, which is legitimately like just yeah. And and that's of course also one way that this episode is still extremely relevant because that is actually something that people are dealing with today. If you can't pay, the hospital might not treat you. So, you know, kids that grew up on this that are, you know, experiencing it today, you know, have been primed for realizing that's unacceptable. That should never happen. Let's see. And, you know, yeah, so it, it becomes clear, you know, Leech might die. And Wolverine's like, so let him and decrease the surplus population. I can't do a very good Wolverine voice. Let's see. And yeah, Jubilee won't. She won't abandon the presence. So she you know, she's got like this massive pile, almost as tall as she is, of, of presents as they run down into the sewers. Let's see. Yeah, and and Wolverine realizes, you know. If they try to move Leech, he would not survive the trip. And I do also appreciate, you know, yeah, like Wolverine has some military training. He, you know, he has some field, what's it called? Field medic training kind of thing. And yeah, they talk about, you know, maybe Wolverine's blood could work. And I think that is also sometimes a thing in the comments. It is that thing, because like the, the healing factor somewhat resides in the blood but it doesn't you can't just like put his blood in someone it, it won't work all the time you know if, if he could there's some chance that dude would just be like strapped to a table constantly giving blood so they had to write it so that it doesn't always work let's see and yeah storm confronts wolverine I quite like <laughs> Ape. We need another, you know, table right next to Sure Thing, and he literally makes himself into a table for the operating. Yeah, Mariana is a very sweet kid. Uh, you know, just they they really do a great job on that. Just you, you know, when she asks, you know, is Leech gonna be okay? Just oh my god, don't. Just, yeah. And, and you know, you can... It, it makes sense. You know, she really wants to impress Jubilee, who 
she may not have seen was was Jubilee there when they dealt with Morlocks? I forget. But you know, and she's the one closest in age, certainly. And yeah, one of the messages here is obviously that family is more important than material goods. And that's part of why this works. You know, so, sometimes when an American produced Christmas story really doesn't work, it's when it gets way too consumerist and materialistic and forgets that it's about fun. You know, like, if that's, you know, if you value consumerism and materialism more than family, you know, I mean, I hope. I hope there's someone to, to take care of the family that you're alienating, but, you know, maybe don't, pr maybe don't act like that's a very Christmassy thing, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Let's see, and Storm gives power back to Callisto, which is also, you know, that's her saying she trusts Callisto to not go out and hurt people because that was why she took the power in the first place in the earlier episode and the presents are given to the Morlocks and the you know Mariana and Leech get to go and open presents and <laughs> you know they they contact the professor and say you know I'm sorry but we're not come we won't be home for Christmas you know, and the, and we get the epic line, Gambit doesn't make TV dinners. <laughs> I don't know who made the decision that he was going to be, like, the clown of the episode, but honestly, nicely done. Just, you know, he's, it, like, he's, an, he's a character you can, you can do drama, you can do, like, sad stuff with him, but he can also just be funny, you know. And, I mean, in his defense, I, I haven't had any, but I hear Cajun food is, like, world-renowned as being delicious. And, and, yeah, it is kind of insulting to say, ah, we'll just, we'll reheat it, you know, just, yeah. But, yeah, just absolutely excellent episode, um... You know, it's the kind of thing, like, there's not, I, I'm not, I don't have a lot more episodes to get to, so there's, it's limited how much more they can do of this, but I do almost wish that they would make, I mean, okay, let's see, I guess a Halloween episode wouldn't necessarily make that much sense, because a number of the episodes are also, are already, you know, as scary as they can get for, for kids. Well, let's see, so they did a Christmas episode... I mean, I could see, like, a thanks Thanksgiving episode. Uh, let's see. What would otherwise be... Um, yeah, I guess those are, those are them. But just, yeah, I, like, if you had told me, I would not have believed that they would do an actual Christmas. Like, I, I saw the title days ago, and I thought, oh, so it's like a joke, like how, you know, Weapon X lies in videotape, you know, that's a, that's a title joke, and I suppose just in case there are kids watching, I will not say what the original title is, but, you know, yeah, I, I, I didn't think they were gonna go whole hog on an actual Christmas episode, but I'm so glad they did. Just, yeah. And it is also, you know, let's let's get something like that done because the next several episodes are the arc known, the, the four-part arc, known as Beyond Good and Evil, which I can tell from the title of at least one of the episodes is indeed about apocalypse. So join me again tomorrow for Beyond Good and Evil Parts 1 and 2, The End of Time, and The Promise of Apocalypse. So yeah, catch you again tomorrow. Make mine marvel.